Good night, viewers, and welcome back to another jam-packed episode of Hotspot. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Hugo Canning, through their brand, Ocean Blue Tuna, for making this show possible. Before I get started, I'd like to welcome Billy. Billy, welcome back to the set. Thank you, Cecil. Good to be back, huh? Yeah, yes, I did uh, miss you last week, so um, yeah. I had to come back. Went for your little trip to Leigh. How was it up there in Leigh? Uh, nice and hot. Yeah. Say, uh, the Leigh weather really hit hard, but it was a really good uh, weekend of sevens. Yeah. Obviously, we'll cover that in segment two, but... Yeah. Um, very exciting. It'll be um, a good uh, a, a mix of uh, young youth uh, and experienced squad yeah. uh, being selected, I believe. Mm. Coca-Cola Pingy Sevens uh, went off with a bang. Yeah, it was uh, a big weekend for uh, Coca-Cola as well. Uh, yeah. Thank you to PNG RFU and uh, Morgan Rugby Union for for hosting the tournament up there. And Darren Locker, Adam McDuro, then they, they're in the country. Really. Yeah, that must be exciting uh, for all NRL followers and uh, especially Darren Lockyer fans and Adam. McDougall fans uh, on the eve of uh, State of Origin, sorry, mm. one week away, countdown started. So yeah, PNG's uh, got the honour of uh, two legends in the country. Yeah, big, big weekend for um, folks here in the country. Um, before we move on, just a quick wrap up of the weekend sports. We've had uh, the women's national snooker titles over the weekend. Coca-Cola women, uh, PNG and Billiard snooker titles. Uh, Gewa John claimed her seventh title in a row, so big weekend That's for her. Awesome uh, result there. Yeah. She's uh, probably leading the way and uh, hopefully it doesn't do the same for the Queenslanders, but we'll cover that later. <laughs> seven. That number seven always <laughs> seems to pop up, huh? Yep. Yeah. Then we move on to uh, Digicel Cup. Yeah, Digicel Cup, some big results there. The uh, top of the table is changing a little bit with the uh, Egbert Gurriers uh, downing the Vipers, uh, unbeaten run. So um, that was some interesting. And the, and the Sapiers finally get a win at um, PRL. They're taking on, uh, beating the TNA Lions. Mm. So big results there for... Um, Asa Pears and also the, the top of the table, Egmar Gurius. Yeah. And moving on to the uh, Hebo Cricket Shield tournament, uh, the first matches we played on the, over the weekend. The Brian Bear Bulldogs, massive win over the Digara Diggers. They went, they went up by nine wickets over there. And then the Enu, Enu Guinea Jets beat uh, the Hebo Hammers by eight wickets as well. So things are heating up there over in the uh, Hebo Shield. And moving on to international uh, sports results, we start off with NRL. Some really big results there. The Titans, uh, obviously, uh, that turmoil is not uh, affecting them. They got mm. over the Cowboys. And the uh, last place Seals finally got a second win. Finally, uh, finally. Taking on uh, the Sharks, sixth place, and uh, really put it to the sword. Last minute win there by uh, the yeah. Eels. And uh, good, good form for uh, Jared Hayde leading yeah. into the second state of origin. We'll That's need it. that. We'll, we'll need, need that, that. for uh, we as in the Blue supporters who... Got yeah. sunk in the first one. The Raiders are. Uh, the Raiders got thumped by the Tigers. Benji Marshall hitting some good form as well. And a uh, big win by the Knight, uh, Broncos over the Knights. Uh, yeah. Really putting uh, Wayne Bennett's uh, team there to uh, the rest there. Yeah? Mm. Especially after big, big things were happening uh, for them at the start of the yeah. season. I, I just, I'm just, just too happy for you guys, Billy the Eels. <laughs> Yeah, and no, I'm happy for myself as well. <laughs> Thanks, so I can actually say uh, proudly that uh, we're back on the winning ways. That's Ten it. more wins and we might be in the top eight. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's have a quick look at the ladder, huh? Yeah, looking at the ladder there, the Storm obviously out in front, followed by uh, the Broncos on uh, 18. The Bulldogs had a good win there, uh, followed there by the Tigers, the Seagulls and the Sharks and the Rapitals all on 16. And the Cowboys bring up the eight on 14. Mm. Over to uh, Super 15 Rugby, Billy, the Crusaders thumped the Highlanders 51 points to 18. Massive win there. Going into the uh, business end of the season there, the yeah. Crusaders stepping up another class. Um, the Chiefs maintaining their uh, winning record there over the Blues, 41-34. And um, I think the biggest uh, result was the Stormers yeah. beating the, the tough Bulls up at uh, South Africa. That... Um, really must be um, a crucial point there for the yeah. Stormers leading into um, the last couple of weekends before the finals. And uh, bringing up the ladder there, the Chiefs uh, leading there out in front. The Brumbies are there in third, the Crusaders in fourth. Then we've got the Bulls, the Hurricanes, the Sharks and the Highlanders rounding up the top eight. So things are definitely heating up over there. It is. Um, and in particular, you can see the, the New Zealand and the South African uh, yeah. uh, teams there really leading the front. The only uh, Australian uh, yeah. team there, the Brumbies, really holding up the fort for the Australians. And interesting enough, uh, the test match on Tuesday yeah. um, really didn't go too well with the Wallabies. Uh, starting the international um, uh, season with a uh, with a loss to the, the Scotland, the Scotland nine yeah. six. 
not good, not good at all for them. It really huh? suited the Scottish, the, the weather mm. and everything. They've got some really tall uh, mm. timber there as well. The way they they played, they really played with a lot of heart. But the Australians really weren't in form. Mm. I think of yeah, I guess if you're judging from the Super 15, yeah. they're forming the Super 15s, they're struggling there. So I guess it's sort of... Which was, I was going to say, you know, yeah. that didn't help their cause. Yeah, it? true. So hopefully they can get that together. They're playing Wales this weekend and mm. um, get back on the, the winning track. And so they have it, a big weekend in sports. After the break, uh, Billy will tell us a bit more about the Coca-Cola PNG 7s that was held last weekend up there in Leigh. Welcome back to the show, and this is the segment where I get to ask Billy some questions about uh, the rugby over the weekend. Billy, time to take off your hotspot cap, and let's talk rugby now. Uh, the Coca-Cola PNG Sevens was held last weekend up in Leigh. How did that go? Uh, it went really well, sir. So I thought um, there was a good good um, turnout by all the all the centres. Uh, I thought taking it back to Leigh was an excellent choice by PNG Rugby Football Union. I got to take my hats off to them and also Morave Rugby Football Union for putting on a, a great tournament. And uh, thank you to major sponsors, Coca-Cola, uh, PNG uh, Sevens coming back on board again. Mm. And uh, you can only, you know, give a great incentive to to the players that want to make it to the, the national squad as well. So it was it was a good weekend, a very uh, hot weekend, I must say. Uh, knowing Lay and it's uh, the heat up there. It did rain up, I think, a little bit on the Thursday night, but Friday, Saturday was excellent uh, day for rugby uh, out at Scrum Oval. Kimber Rebels got up again, Victors. Yeah, I thought uh, they were really pushed uh, in the semi-finals uh, by Capital Rugby Union Sevens team. Could have gone either way. At the end of the day, uh, they put their hand up, um, and uh, you know, even though they were six men down, they still had the goods to do it. And it just shows that they know the game really well. They're playing a long time now, and uh, their combinations really came through in the end. But I thought the Capital Rugby Union Sevens team really pushed them to the wire. That for me was the final. I thought. Um, the um, actual final itself against Lei uh, Kibe were too experienced yeah. um, at the end of the day. Um, but uh, a couple of surprise packages was um, the junior development squad that played um, under the guise of uh, the, the Lei junior team. Okay. They, they technically were very good. Um, mm. They really know, you know their, their rugby and they, they played a really exciting band mm. that I thought was a standout team of the whole weekend. So congratulations to yeah. Scrum and the Lei development um, program getting there. It's it really showing some fruits. Hopefully they can make a transition into mm. the, the next phase. So, yeah, that, good, good exciting uh, yeah. rugby at the end of the weekend. And uh, they recently announced the new coaches, uh, Al Manning and Warren Jennings. New yeah, Warren coaches. Jennings is head coach and Al Manning is assistant coach. So it's a, a different approach PNG yeah. RFU is taking. Um, we can only see how the results go yeah. after the first uh, tournament. But I think at the end of the day, they've got a good crop of players to pick from. Yeah. Um, all centres were represented well, yeah. um, and at the end of the day, you know whatever squad they come up with will basically be um, really up there as a challenge to yeah. try and get us to qualify for uh, for the IRB circuit. So after this uh, tournament in May, what's what, what's the next step for? Uh... Well, I believe um, they're going to select the, uh, as the coaches said, a 30 to uh, 40 man squad, mm -hmm. which will be finally broken down to 12 by the end of uh, July. Okay. Um, so that'll be brought out. I think the squad will be announced in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. They then uh, put them into a training program and then get them back into a, uh, the sevens mode because um, obviously it would be in 15, so yeah. everyone sort of switch on um, back into that mode again. And then uh, they select the final 12 to travel to um, the Oceania sevens. It's going to be in Sydney this year. Last year it was in Darwin. Mm -hmm. This year in Sydney, and um, okay. 12 will be travelling to that. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I think, um, and I believe it's going to be a very strong 12-man squad after what we saw on the weekend. And uh, just leading into the tournament, there was a, a coaching clinic that was held there by a couple of the Pacific in Union. Yeah, the new, new program that's come in place, uh, Pacific in Union, that's co run with uh, um, Australian Rugby Union, IRB, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in conjunction with uh, PNGRFU support, we've got uh, Paul Joseph, who's uh, the in-house uh, manager, and Dougie um, Geis as the uh, development manager who've been employed now under that program. Okay. That they did a, a coaching and refereeing, or mainly a coaching uh, um, course during the week, which gave a lot of insights on uh, mm. the new tech, new way of coaching, and also the the new uh, 
rules that are coming out, and that really gave a lot of uh, insight to, especially the uh, the people that attended. Um, hopefully, they can then put that out in the the game now. So that that'll be an ongoing program that okay. uh, PJ and Dougie are now working on yeah. together with uh, Warren Robiliard, who came up to run that. So that was a start of uh, at least uh, some progress to try and get uh, our coaches, you know, yeah. up to up to a good level. No, that's awesome. I think um, well done to. Uh, Richard Sapias and his team there, um, Simon Kerr, on ensuring that our coaches do get qualified, yep. get to uh, move, move the code forward. But um, back to the sevens, apart from the, the regular teams there, what, what teams do you think really stood out, caught your eye? Caught my eye, like I said, the junior development squad was uh, quite exciting to watch. Um, Madang, um, I suppose, were missing PJ's um, input, but you know, they've come a long way and they have uh, really progressing well. Um, what about the return of uh, the boys down there in Daru? Uh, they didn't play actually, they didn't make it and it was unfortunate so that mm. would have been probably another exciting team to watch but yeah, they yeah. didn't make it. Always exciting. Um, I, I'll wear my central hat now, I thought the central team you know, did well for the first tournament but yeah. obviously we got taken away in the first game when we, um, our second game we got, you know, we met the, the winners, Kembe, which uh, really put us to the sword so yeah. I've been on the learning curve but otherwise I thought the junior development side really showed mm. what, what the technique and the, the actual ability of uh, rugby is all about and really showed up the more the senior fancy side. But it was good to see Goroka there. Yeah. Uh, it was good to see uh, um, Ramu there as well. And um, it was unfortunate that Kimbe, uh, sorry, KBN and uh, Daru couldn't make it. Mm. But otherwise, um, I thought yeah, the junior development side was, was a team that, I, I, that stood out for me. Games are definitely spreading out. Henry Nillicott played play the tournament? In the yeah, Henry played uh, his normal brand of rugby. Very, very talented uh, player. I think he's number one uh, in our sevens ranks at the moment. You know, uh, and he's got skills uh, oozing out of him. So some, he's one player that will definitely make the squad for, for my pick. Mm. So, uh, yeah, big things happened there in A last weekend. Uh, once again, uh, thank you to Coca-Cola for hosting that tournament. Yeah, and thank you to sorry. also uh, tournament directors uh, Akumaniana and Robin Terreri. He did a great job and his crew up there. So thank you very much t to them as well. All right. So I think it's about time we wrap things up. Here. Yeah, so we go to a break straight after this. We come back with international sport. <laughs> Welcome back to Hotspot. And this week, Port Moresby got the honour of uh, having some vi international uh, visitors in Darren Lockie and Adam McDougall in support of uh, PNG and NRL bid. Uh, Ceci, did you get a chance to meet them at all? Oh, I didn't get the chance to meet them. I wish I could have. You know, Darren Lockyer, McDougall, they're both legends in their own right. Um, Lockyer especially, Broncos, even though I don't support him when it comes to the state of origin. But, you know, legends, it's good to have them in the country. And uh, I know that they had a really busy schedule. Um, yeah. They visited the Broco uh, Trophy house uh, yesterday mm. and had dinner at the CV restaurant at uh, Ella Beach. Yeah. So that must have been exciting for those staff and uh, workers there. Yeah. Everywhere he goes, he seems to draw attention, these two. You know, they, they, they had a big banner up yesterday, Welcome Chief Lockie. He's now a chief. He's gone up the status. Yeah. I, I think that's what happens when you retire, so you, you're close to that. <laughs> well. But this morning, they had the chance to go up to Pomis and a uh, couple of questions there from some excited uh, Pomis kids. Uh, he's a very. I like him because he's a very good player. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I support Maroons and Broncos. That's why I support Broncos. Yeah, I felt happy because he's a famous player. Did you ever think you'd meet Darren Lockyer one day? Uh, no, but I met him today. Do you like um, the Maroons? Uh, not really. <laughs> What's your favorite general team? Um, Bulldogs. Uh, that makes me feel happy because he came and talked to all of us that if you want to be rugby players, we have to study on our education first. Then we can go into rugby league. So, um, what, in your own opinion, what do you think of Darren Lockyer? A lot of people say he's a really good player. What do you think? Yeah, he's a good player because he's played a lot of games and won a lot of premierships. I see you have an autograph here by Darren. What are you going to do with it? I'm gonna go and show it to my family. 
Hi, Jean. Um, Hi. Do you like Donald? Yes. Why do you like Donald? Because he's a great player and he scores twice for Maroon. Mm -hmm. Would you ever think he'd come to your school? No. Would you ever think come to your school? What do you think It was nice because he was inspiring us about this story. Hey, um, so you got to meet Donald? No, I didn't. That's why I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like him a lot um, because he's a nice player and um, he's a Queenslander. Yeah, my my whole family loves him. But I'm a Blues. No, I'm a Maroon. So. <laughs> um, well, I want him to come back and meet me. <laughs> They have some very excited students out there at the Put Mosby International School. They got to meet their heroes, uh, Darren Nocke and Adam McDougall. I'm sure this is a day they won't forget anytime soon. Um, but uh, after the break, we'll come back and preview all that will be shown right here on your number one, MTV. Welcome back to Hotspot and we're going through the MTV Sports Guide for this weekend and uh, straight after the show don't uh, turn your TVs off as the uh, NRL footy show will be obviously uh, doing pre-game uh, interviews for the State of Origin and leading up to the weekend's games. Friday night football, 7.30 the NRL Storms take on the West Tigers on Saturday, 10.30pm the Knights take on the Raiders, on Sunday at 2pm the Sharks take on the Titans. And at 4 p.m., the Roosters take on the Broncos. Uh, Cesc, your match of the round there, what do you think? Um, uh, I can't wait to watch the Roosters and the Broncos. The Broncos had a big win last week, and hopefully they can get up again. Yeah, I reckon the footy show will be uh, the highlight of my uh, weekend. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Storms yeah. and the Tigers, I reckon. Good yeah. match, Friday night football to kick Friday off the weekend. Football. Always big, always yep. big. And uh, we move on to uh, the Hebo Shield, Hebo Shield Cricket. Um, 2020 match on the 9th there. We have uh, Hebo, they play BSP at the Colts ground at 10 a.m. And then on Saturday, we have in 50 overs, Pool A, Brian Bell take on Digara, and Monia take on Enu Guinea at the Colts ground. On Monday, 2020, we have the BSP, they play Monia at the Amini Parks at 10 a.m. Then at 2 p.m., Digara take on Enu Guinea, and that's on Monday. And moving on to Digital Cup round nine, Sunday, 10th June, we have the Lions taking on the Miocs up at the Dixon Oval. The Tigers take on the Lahanis at Lay Rugby League Oval. The Vipers will lock horns with the Eagles at PRL, which will uh, be the, the hotspot for the weekend. The Gurios take on the Bronco, uh, the Murok, sorry, they colorbond up at Rabal. Yeah. Gurios hit some form, top of the table. Yep, Looking it's really going to be exciting. Yeah. Halfway through the uh, season now, and uh, obviously uh, separate the men from the boys. That's it. Vipers better pick up, or it's, you know. Yep. Yeah. And as we move on into the Capital Rugby, they enter round six this weekend. Big games this week. We have uh, Harlequins taking on the Salians there. And uh, game of the round on the Saturday afternoon will be between Brothers and Chiefs. And on Sunday, Nova play Spartans while Royals play Wanderers. But I think in the women's division, Harlequins versus Nova, that should be a really good game. You reckon? Yes, I think so. Well, mate, you better be up for it, mate. Yeah. Uh, do a side bet on the side there. <laughs> anyway, it's a big weekend of sport. And um, I think, for me, the hotspot obviously will be um, the Darren Lockie and the mm. Adam McDougall uh, visit this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it should be exciting for the NRL fans and also the, uh, the public of Port Moresby seeing all the heroes out there. So get out there and see them. Yeah. 
get out there and support the NRA building any way you can. But uh, before we go, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Hugo Canning through their brand Ocean Blue Tuna for making this show possible. And uh, to all the blue supporters out there, you know, we've got to get this one or it's over for us. It's a wrap. And until we come back, State of Origin 2 next week, see you all later.